Hello, my friends. Today's video is going to be a comparison and ranking of six new skincare foundations at Sephora. As always, for those of you that are short on time, I have timestamps and links to all of these products in the description box below. Maybe you only want to watch a review on one or two of these. Totally understand. Although if you do skip past the intro and just watch the product reviews themselves, please know it's a rough start. I promise it's not just a negative video, but the worst product is first in this video. <laughs> but for those of you who like to stay for the intro, I wanna say a few things. First of all, this is my Sephora VIB sale video, yay. I'm sure you know the details, so I won't spend a ton of time on it, but yes, it does start this Friday. And uh, you might be wondering, really? Aren't you kind of more of a skincare channel and you're making a video about foundation? I confess to you all, I have been over here thinking, which I'm very good at, I'm very good at thinking, thinking for three weeks about how to make a skincare VIB sale video, and uh, I can't do it. I like some skincare brands at Sephora, Biosance, Pharmacy, Alpen Beauty, but listen, they're gonna run much better sales come Black Friday, maybe even come November 1st. You all remember some of the Black Friday sales started November 1st last year. I stand corrected. Ulta has a Black Friday sale going on right now, and it's not even Halloween yet. I like some K-Beauty and J-Beauty at Sephora, Suasu, SK2, but you're gonna get better deals on Stylevana. I saw Heather leave a comment that you can save $100 on SK2 buying it through Stylevana. Just know it might take a month. That's the trade-off with Stylevana is the slow shipping. The VIB sale has slow shipping too, though. So my skincare recommendations for the VIB sale is maybe the Dr. Dennis Gross LED set. But even then, you know I have complicated thoughts on that one. You know I do. I'll link a video if you want more information about that. Yes, the set's a good deal, but not everyone needs that. But I admit to you, the Sephora VIB sale is good for a few things. It's good for foundations. It's good for concealers, products where it's kind of hard to get the right shade. I, I got to admit, it's easy to make returns at both Sephora and Ulta. Just make sure you do it. You know, as somebody who has an international audience who some people are, are shocked by our returns policy, let me just say this. We as Americans tend to get talked into buying things because of the return policy. And then when something doesn't work out for us, we talk ourselves into not returning it. It's amazing. America is so good at getting us to spend money. And I have two more VIB sale recommendations. First is the Sephora favorite sets. Look through them, decide if any of them are worth it for you personally. A lot of people kind of poo poo on the Sephora favorite sets because they say, you know, Ah, uh, we're all makeup enthusiasts here. Who hasn't bought the Charlotte Tilbury lip liner? Who hasn't bought the Rare Beauty lip gloss? Uh, actually, a lot of people. There, there's actually a lot of people who haven't bought those yet, and you do get an amazing value in these. And I gotta say, Sephora is good at curating. It's not the newest stuff, but it is good products. But my favorite recommendation, and this is one that every single one of you can get 30% off, Starting Friday and get it Friday because this sold out last year, the Sephora Pro Collection brush set. Listen, I bought this last year and I've talked myself into buying it again because these are such good brushes. There is no sacrifice in quality in the brush set. Sometimes a lot of brands give you not as good brushes in their value sets. And honestly, it pains me to say it, but this selection is better this year than it was last year. I updated this. This is mostly this year's set. The only difference is instead of the eyeliner brush, you get the brow brush this year. But you see how my the color on my number 47 here is a little different. I had to buy that one individually. That and the 71 concealer are in this year's set, and those are some of the best brushes. They're that cat paw shape. They are so... <laughs> So good for applying, I would say, light to medium coverage foundation and concealer. You're going to see me use those brushes to apply some of the products in today's video. It is such a good set. It will be $57 with the discount. And one more thing, with the Sephora items, the Sephora collection, remember, especially if you're Rouge or if you are VIB, if you are buying this on Friday, buy it by itself and add a gift with purchase. It's the exception Sephora is so stingy with the ability to combine coupons and gifts with purchases, except for with their brand. 
And I'm telling you, I, I'm not joking. Can, can you tell how passionate I am about this? These are my favorite, in particular, complexion brushes in my collection. I didn't expect it. They say that these brushes are uh, designed by makeup artists, which just feels like, of course they are. It's like when skincare companies say, our products were designed by cosmetic chemists. Okay, as opposed to what? Uncle Bob designing the skincare products? But there's something about the pro, it's the pro line specifically, not the silver handles, the black handles, where the quality is just so good. They are designed so well. They're such good brushes. Unbelievable. If my mascara runs further in this video, just know it's this new mascara. Of course, it is rough. It's the Polite Society mascara by the former owner of Too Faced. Ugh. As far as what you may have come here today for, we're gonna be talking about skincare containing skin tints as well as serum foundations. I decided to do this on the newer releases. And what I wanna say here is we're gonna talk about six foundations. Do not buy more than one of these. It is actually shocking to me how similar some of these are. My goal in this video is to, you know, dehype some of these products, some of them, some of them are very hyped at the moment, and I just don't think you need more than one of even the hyped products. So this isn't a best foundations and skin tints at Sephora. It's meant to remove some of the hype and also hopefully help you find the perfect fit for you. Because again, the differences are so subtle that I, I just don't want you to end up with two that are so similar and yet, you know, you like one a little more than the other. I only have six today to review because I received four of these six in PR. This is not gonna be a video where I tell you the PR are the best products. It's gonna be an honest video because I want it to be helpful for you. At the end of the day, it's still my opinion, and if you disagree with me, I welcome your feedback in the comment section below. Skincare as well as makeup are both very personal. Put them together and you still have a personal product at the end of the day. Oh, isn't that even technically this category? Makeup is personal care. But let's go ahead and get into it. Again, I'm going from lightest coverage to heaviest coverage, which means we have to start with the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Skin Tint. Thank you so much for sending this over, Bobbi Brown, and I'm really sorry about how much I don't like this. <laughs> this one does have the lightest coverage in today's video, and I want to say that's not the reason I don't like this. It's actually a bit of a pet peeve of mine when I see negative reviews on skin tints where people say, not enough coverage. But at the same time, I do feel like there should be some amount of coverage, and there's just really not with this product. I will show you the video clip of me applying this and it's just amazing how much of this product I use to not even have it cover up my, my little skin reaction at all. <laughs> I said we're gonna talk about ingredients and we're gonna talk a lot about ingredients. So one thing you just cannot help but notice in this is that this is a skincare product with a lot of essential oils and let me tell you, it smells like it too. Wow. It smells so strong that in all truth, that's part of what I don't like about it. You know, scent is personal. Some people may like the scent, but it is just so much for me. And when we look at the rest of the ingredients, it's just not very exciting at all. Okay, you've got a postbiotic ingredient, the salt form of hyaluronic acid. That's so ubiquitous in skincare that you're just not really giving us a lot more. You're getting an SPF of 15 in this product. In all truth, I don't care if there is sunscreen or no sunscreen in my uh, foundation and skin tint products because I've already applied it. But in my opinion, adding SPF 15 on top is probably really not doing very much in addition. And finally, when you see the application of this, I just, I don't know how this can be a product that is this light coverage and also this terrible looking on my skin. My theory with this one is, I think that it is a moisturizing product, but what seems to happen on my skin is my skin absorbs the moisture in this product and then leaves the tint behind on the surface of my skin, just looking like, frankly a hot mess. <laughs> Hear me out here, I have dry skin. Maybe this is a completely different experience for oily skin types, but I have to admit to you, for me, I've been over here 
combing through this, trying to find some redeeming qualities, and I just do not think that this compares to the other products in this video. In my personal opinion, I think most of you can probably pass on this one. It's so sad to say, you know, I actually really like Bobbi Brown. I'm wearing one of the two of the eyeshadow sticks today, but I don't know what happened with this, it, it, at least in my experience. I'm attempting to go in order here, but I have to admit both of these next two are very similar in coverage and in finish. But let's start with the Hourglass Veil Hydrating Skin Tint. This is a product that I actually received in PR initially and I repurchased it. So I do like this one. It might even be my personal favorite in the video. First of all, this is the rare oil-based skin tint. You very rarely see this because I think a lot of people don't think they want oils in their foundation or skin tints. But I have dry skin, bring on the oils. Make sure to adjust your primer as needed here. You may find you do best with an oil-based primer, you know, a silicone-based primer for a silicone-based foundation or skin tint. But admittedly, this has been fine for me to just apply over my standard foundation. Again, it is going to be glowy as you would expect from a foundation that is so rich in these nourishing oils. And what a beautiful oil choice. We have some meadow foam seed oil in here. I also like squalane, a little bit of a, a different oil, kind of more, more like our, our natural oils. Hyaluronic acid and rambutan. We've talked about rambutan before. Some brands, some skincare brands, have hyped up that ingredient as an alternative to retinol. I don't think it's an alternative to retinol personally, but that's what a lot of brands claim. Really what it comes down to for me is that this does look beautiful on my dry skin type. And there's another quirk of this that I really like. This is a thicker product. It feels like a foundation and yet it's light coverage. Most of the products we're gonna be talking about in this video are watery to very watery. And not everybody loves working with a runny formula. That can be kind of tricky to figure out your best application with this because it does feel like a foundation. I feel like I can apply this any way I want to with a sponge, with my fingers, with a brush, and it always looks nice. I don't really have a lot of cons with this one. I have seen some people say it didn't work out for them, but as we talked about in my skincare reaction video, you can react to anything. For me, it's been great. The only real con with this is that their shade range is kind of confusing. They have different undertones in these, but it seems like they also add more depth into the color shade itself. Which I find kind of odd because you can have different undertones no matter the depth of your skin color. So they sent me shade one, but it was a little bit too cool tone for me. I went back for shade two, which I thought might be too deep, but it's actually a perfect match. So I think with this one, if you're on the fence, if you do want to get this, I would say look at the undertone first. Because one thing to keep in mind with skin tints is they're not giving you a lot of color, but it seems like the undertone does matter. At least in my experience. So again, I really like this one. I think it's a good choice for dry skin, but I'm ultimately not giving it the highest score in this video, and you'll see why in just a moment. Our next skin tint is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Tint. Listen, I'm gonna tell you now, this in my opinion is the biggest people pleaser. I think the largest number of people will be happy with this. It may not be the perfect fit for every last person, but it is very well made. First of all, this is a beautiful formula. It is absolutely a product that reads much more like a skincare product. We have squalane, we have that uh, collagen alternative, that vegan collagen that the outset uses. That's the SR hydrozoan polypeptide one ingredient. We have a ceramide ingredient, phytosterols, cactus extract to add some extra hydration, all in really an incredible shade range. They sent these over, so shade one is actually too light for me, which I think is saying a lot. That's saying a lot. I do have a very fair skin tone, but there are people with an even more fair skin tone. Look at how light this goes. 
not only light, but also very deep in terms of the shade range. Phenomenal shade range, the best value, the best value in the whole video, $36 and not just for one fluid ounce, this is 1.58 fluid ounces. I forgot to highlight the iron oxides, but as a quick refresher, those are ingredients that may be helpful for blocking blue light. There's even some limited evidence that it may be helpful for preventing hyperpigmentation. I wouldn't stress it, but I think it's, you know, it's a funny detail that makeup may actually be good for your skin. There's no SPF in this, which is fine. Just wear it over your sunscreen. There is no scent in this product and it wears beautifully. The one detail I will tell you with this is I do prefer to apply this with my fingers. So yes, this is my top pick from this video. There may be certain characteristics that you like a little more in some of the other products, but as a whole, she knocked it out of the park with this release. It's a really, really good skin tint. We are gonna talk about the CL Tint and Protect SPF 50 next. Whoa, this one has had a lot of hype on social media. Now disclosure, I did get this in PR. I'm gonna tell you it's good. I am also going to tell you my critiques with this one. First of all, let's look at the ingredients together. So it has kind of a lot of those skin benefiting ingredients, bisabolol, allantoin, niacinamide. But I gotta admit something, I, I gotta admit something. I'm a smidge flustered by the fact that they keep saying this is a mineral sunscreen. And those of you who also watch Lab Muffin Beauty, you know exactly where I'm about to go with this. She is right, she is right. This has titanium dioxide, which is a mineral filter. By the way, sometimes it gets a bit of a bad rap, but you can formulate it in a way that it is fully broad spectrum. Just don't breathe it, which I doubt you're doing in a liquid form anyway. But it also has butyl octyl salicylate. Butyl octyl salicylate is a sunscreen booster that is structurally very similar to ethyl hexyl salicylate, also known as octisalate. It's essentially a chemical filter that a lot of these clean makeup brands and skincare brands like to include in their formula because it makes for a much more elegant sunscreen or sunscreen containing foundation, but I feel that it is a little misleading. Is it really a mineral foundation? Because if you ask me, it feels like y'all are stretching the truth. And I saw reviews from people saying this replaces sunscreen. No, it doesn't. Everyone should have a stress banana. Wait, I just noticed something really funny with this one. I just noticed something really, really funny. So the inactive ingredient says on it titanium dioxide, but look at the, the drug facts up here. It says 12% zinc oxide. I think this is titanium dioxide, but uh, CL, you might wanna fix that. In addition, this is a dimethicone based foundation. And I just gotta reiterate that uh, really proves to me that I like silicones in my foundations. I do, silicones were a, a family of ingredients that, listen, not everybody can use. That is true, again, see my skin reactions video, no ingredient is for everyone. But something happened with silicones where a lot more people got nervous about those ingredients than I think should have been nervous. Silicones are really quite innocuous and they typically make a moisturizer, foundation, or skin tint spread more nicely. So listen, this is all to say this comes together to actually be beautiful. I do see why it is hyped. It is a lovely foundation on, spreads so nicely, wears well, and it is more skin-like. If the other products in this video are too glowy for you, this one is not too glowy. My critique would be, again, you know, it says mineral SPF right here on the packaging, but with that UV booster in it, it, it just seems like this is further demonizing of so-called chemical filters. The word scares some people, and yet we are made of chemicals. A few more criticisms. I don't love the double system here of a dropper. It's just kind of a pain. It's kind of a pain. Maybe a minor criticism to some, but I don't personally love that. I prefer a good old pump or squeeze tube. And then secondly, wow, the shade range is confusing. There's no information on the undertones here. What? Y you have to tell us the undertones. This is shade two. I would call this neutral. I think this is a neutral shade. So yeah, neutral in my opinion, but I, I just, I don't understand why 
there's no information about the undertones. The best shade range comparison I have is the Sephora pictures. That is not, don't, please don't rely on that entirely. Well-made foundation, but you, you gotta make it more clear to customers what undertone and depth you're buying. Am I wrong? <laughs> Our next foundation is one where I respect it, but in all truth, it is not my absolute favorite. So this is the Bare Minerals Original Pure Serum Radiant Natural Liquid Foundation. I believe this was recently reformulated. I did get this in PR and I have to admit to you, wow, the reviews on Sephora are bad. <laughs> oh, they are bad, but there's also only two or three at this moment, and I, I think most of those people are upset about the reformulation, which is something I can understand. I, too, have been the victim of a reformulation I didn't like, uh, Augustin is Bader. Now listen, this has the shortest ingredients list out of this video. In all truth, this might be the best option for those of you that have very sensitive skin. It's so short that there really isn't a lot to talk about when we actually look at the ingredients list, which I think is why when we get into the claims, whatever 93% skincare means, I don't think that I don't think that means too much. With a real pared down product like this, you kind of end up having to make your ingredient claims about what the product doesn't contain. And it is true, it doesn't contain silicones, fragrance, or oil. But because it doesn't contain silicones, which I just said I like in a product, it doesn't spread as nicely. Because it doesn't contain oil, it makes it less dry skin friendly, at least for me personally. So in the end, it feels like one of those foundation options that is fine. Again, at least if you can use the ingredients I just said. This, this could be a holy grail for very sensitive skin types. And again, I said I respect it, and I do. This one is a true mineral foundation. We do not have sneaky UV filters masquerading in the product, not letting you know that you are using a hybrid foundation. Ugh. I also respect the shade range. It's a smaller shade range, but nobody was left out. If you're building it up to full coverage, it still may not include everybody, but the effort was there, and I respect that. And I think I respect it is, is what I can say about this. You know, again, because I'm only working with 23 ingredients here, I don't have a lot more to comment on. It's fine. It is funny that it doesn't look good in Aura's swatch. So I will say, make sure that you just use a basic moisturizer with this one, uh, something that doesn't contain silicones, doesn't contain oil, because your primer needs to match your foundation for it to work its best. I have one final foundation for this video, and it is the Estee Lauder Futurist Skin Tint. Now, I was talked into buying this one by the ingredients list, but also because I saw Not For Print Beauty here on YouTube talk about this. Do you all, do you all know her channel? I'll link it below. She said that this was such an interesting formula where she felt that it looked better the longer she wore it. That has been my experience as well as a dry skin type, and I think it's something that you can kind of see why it would wear well when you look at the ingredients here. Look at the oils in this product. Meadow Foam Oil, Rosehip, they managed to put Rosehip Oil into a foundation. Do you know how hard that is? Usually, if you formulate with rosehip oil and a foundation, it's going to make the foundation change color through the day. But see, they didn't stop there because do you see that bentonite ingredient? That's a clay. So you have both oils and a clay ingredient in the same formula. What? It's absolutely fascinating. I don't know how they pulled it off, but it really does come together to be gorgeous on dry skin in particular. I will express a, a concern I have. I do think it might, as they say, oxidize on a more oily skin type because of those oils. But on my dry skin type, we have a perfect balance of that clay and the oils going on so it stays the color on my skin that I first applied. This is the one I'm wearing today. I did apply it more lightly. I like to use a sponge with this because yes, it's a buildable coverage foundation, but I prefer kind of lighter coverage and a sponge helps me to keep it a little bit more light. It looks so pretty and it really does look flattering, especially where I have kind of fine lines, you know, dynamic lines. 
it's nothing to hate on. It's a thing that happens. But as you get a little bit older, yeah, you do have, you know, some foundations will sink into those dynamic lines on our face. This one, it reminds me of the Shiseido Synchro Skin, which also kind of did this plumping effect. But I am thoroughly blown away with this. One commentary, it has a big shade range, which almost overwhelmed me. I can't remember why I ended up going with 1W1 Bone. It is a little warm, and while I can, oh, you know why? <laughs> it's because I ended up liking the Bare Minerals in Fair Warm 1, so I thought, oh, maybe I like warmer foundations, but there's a difference. The Bare Minerals leans more yellow. This one leans a little more orange. But because I'm only applying it light, I think I'm still pulling it off. I would say, uh, you know, if you tend to usually wear neutral foundations, stick with neutral. <laughs> I wish I had as well, but like I said in the intro of this video, we don't really make returns in the US. <laughs> I am really impressed with it. I think it's one of the most interesting formulations I've seen since the Shiseido Synchro Skin. And my friends, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope it was helpful. If it was, make sure to like and subscribe and feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. Let me know what you're picking up in the Sephora VIB sale. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week and I will see you all next time.